Whether you consider yourself to be a master of all trades or a jack of none, and in case you're wondering, no, I did not get my words twisted, this jam talk might just be tailored for you. Stay tuned. Jam. Hello everybody, welcome back to another jam talk. Hope you're having an okay day so far. I'm Rupin from Jammed and today we'll be talking about the difference between being a specialist and a generalist and what each type really excels at in design specifically because that's what we do here on this channel. If it's your first time on the channel, here I do design content dedicated for designers like yourself on various different topics. Make sure to watch this video till the end and if you liked it, please check out my channel for more cool stuff. Okay, so the question that always keeps going around in the design industry or any other industry really. What is really better, the infamous generalist, aka the James of all trades, or the specialist? You know what answer best fits this type of question? It's complicated. Really, it all comes down to what you're looking for in your life. Are you looking to be more rigid and have extremely deep knowledge about one subject and be the best at it? Or are you looking to be more flexible, more like a Swiss knife that has many utilities? There are pros and cons to both types, and I really think the world needs both types of people. But personally, I think it's best to be a mix of both in order to reach your utmost potential in your design career. So what is a specialist really needed in? The specialist is great at having deep knowledge about one subject and just nailing it down to the core. When it comes to solving an extremely complex problem, the specialist knows exactly how to solve a very specific problem in a very niche area due to their deep knowledge about that particular field, which makes their expertise really come in handy and valuable. For a very basic example, if Google decided to hire someone for a particular design position, let's say they need a designer to design their icons to specifically match with one another, the person that is more likely to get hired is the one specialized in that field, who had put hours upon hours reaching mastery in designing icons for example, and built most of his career around it. But if you happen to think about it, how many companies similar to Google are offering similar specialized very niche positions? Do you kind of get where I'm coming from here? Being a specialist is extremely needed in the design industry to push for the highest of quality. However, there's an obvious lack of flexibility when it comes to being a specialist. Many specialists find it hard to adapt to change when it comes to picking up something new and doing it for the first time for the company that they work for. And you can't really blame them for it. Specialists spend most of their time diving extremely deep into one subject, making them extremely good at it and more valuable when it comes to hiring them in these positions. However, they become limited to that one position for a while. And in addition, there are fewer positions looking for a specialist in comparison to a generalist. Which I'm gonna follow up with a simple question. Do you really have something that you are both great at and love doing that you could keep doing for the rest of your life? If your answer to that question is yes, then by all means go ahead and pursue being a specialist. But how about I offer you a better deal? What if it becomes to being a special jack of all trades? Now you're probably thinking, what is this idiot even talking about? And I'm not going to blame you for thinking that way. I'm embracing my stupid energy right now, give me a chance. What if you are both a generalist and a specialist at the same time? Since the pros of one are the cons of the other, why not be a mix of both? You could be really specialized at something while still knowledgeable about many other things tangent to your field, which makes you much more adaptable to change and flexible when it comes to finding work and getting hired. The benefit of being a Michael of all trifles is knowing just enough about everything to be able to almost do anything you wish. Even if it's just surface level knowledge to get the engine rolling, it's just about getting something started which is the beauty of the whole thing. But that's for another video. Even if you want to start your own business, there is nothing that limits you from beginning something on your own. You have bro knowledge about how nails grow faster during pregnancy and how the wood frog could hold up its pee for up to 8 months. Not convinced yet? Pringles aren't actually potato chips. Sorry. In all seriousness though, being a generalist and knowing a lot about stuff related to your field while also having a specific niche that you're specialized in really does give you a strong edge in the industry. The concept of knowing how things are done has always fascinated me personally. Curiosity always made me, instead of watching something the way it is, whether it's a movie or an advertisement or whatever it is, watch them and try to figure out how certain things are done in the industry. And I know you'd ask, why would you even do that? What's the point of that? There are definitely a bunch of useless that I've learned over the course of years but definitely some of what I've learned really stayed with me up until now and I still use it in my work. In addition, it opened my eyes to new perspectives and new hobbies. For example, I always liked graphic design on its own but then I thought why not try working with 3D. And within 2 weeks I had picked up Blender and now I use it to make my own custom mockups or even mix 3D work with 2D work etc. And then I started learning UI design because I liked the field and because I already have prior experience in motion graphics, 
I now combine both to create custom animated prototypes to present my work and be able to get my ideas across accurately so that I do not leave any questions unanswered to the developers. Do you see the possibilities that get opened to you once you start learning more about different subjects? Please don't get my words twisted, I do not want you to wander around aimlessly and keep trying out new things for the rest of your life. While that might sound fun, it also isn't a great approach to work life in general. Which is why I'm asserting that having a mix of being a master of one and an edit that's always ready is much better than being an extreme on either side, in my opinion. Try and have the best of both worlds. Balance is important when it comes to work life, like the yin and yang. Try not to be all over the place and at the same time do not restrict yourself to one thing specifically, especially if you'll find yourself bored after a little while. The transition will be much harder. Anyhow, these were my two cents on being a specialist or a jack of all trades. You thought I was gonna say something stupid, didn't you, huh? Of course, once again, choose something that works for you. If you have been a specialist and it has worked for you awesomely, I'm proud of you, keep doing whatever you're doing and the same for the generalists out there. What I'm trying to offer you is a new perspective to look at the conflict on whether to be a generalist or a specialist. And perhaps this video was insightful for you and has provided you valuable information, the decision is completely up to you in the end. You always hear the quote, the jack of all trades is a master of none, perhaps you should also listen to the rest of the quote, but oftentimes better than a master of one. That's it for this topic, hope this talk was somewhat interesting for you, if you enjoyed this video please make sure to jam that like button below and share this video with other designers who would find it useful and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to not miss future jammed content and let me know down in the comments what are your thoughts on both generalists and specialists, which one are you and what problems do you face regularly, let's have a little chat down there, I'll be waiting to hear from you. Anyway I'll see you in the next video, make sure to have a nice one, see you later.